Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Spartacus Game Developer Update number eight. I am, of course, your host, Oliver Joyce from Whiskey Barrel Studios, and eight means two months. So we've been working on this for two months, plus a little bit of prep time. Um, this week, we are talking about traps. Now, the last two or three weeks of videos have been also about traps, but um, when I say traps, I mean hazards and sort of objects that are in the way of Spartacus reaching his objective. And a good platform game is made up of um, any number of traps. What I was surprised to find was when I went back and played Prince of Persia recently, and you can see that in the uh, Games Gladiator video from about two or three weeks ago, that game only has two or three traps. There's a spike trap, the razor door trap, and um, another one I've forgotten. I think there's the falling platforms, the traps as well, technically. But they've made up 12 really interesting levels from those traps. And um, it made me think and made me realize that you can get a long way on just using a few traps very cleverly and positioning them in ways that makes the player think. Right now I'm up to about seven or eight traps and maybe nine, but each one has quite a lot of variety in terms of uh, how I can customize it. You know, um, the rate of the speed of um, the circular saws that go left and right or how fast um, blocks crumble. Um, and in particular, these new traps that I wanna show you, the shooting traps have a lot of customization. So today, yeah, we're talking traps. Let's jump right into Unity and have a look. When we last left Spartacus, we were somewhere around here. So we'd seen the fire traps, we'd seen the portcullis with the little um, trigger that opens it and closes it. And of course the um, spike traps here, which you can just make out with the dots on them. And they, uh, from last week's video, passed the crumbling block and the water hazard. And this is our trusty debug spawn point. Uh, these levels, of course, are, um, or this particular level is a test level, a sandbox, if you will. And it's something that I use to put all the mechanics in the game um, in one level to, to test out how they work with each other. This isn't a level you'll find at the end of the game um, anywhere in, the ver in that version of the game. Uh, you might find, you know, elements of it, but this uh, is just for me, for test purposes. Uh, all right. So let's spawn here. There's our hero, and let's uh, jump down and have a look. When you jump down, there's a little skull firing at us. Notice a weird graphical glitch here. This is our trap, but um, the actual trap disappears when it's firing. That's not supposed to be the case. It's just uh, something that I'm working on, and it'll be back for the next video. It's supposed to open his mouth like you see in the last video. But that fires to the left, and if we get hit, that hit does damage to us. And that fires on an interval and it only fires to the left. So we're standing here, that won't do any damage. And that's firing every couple of seconds or so. But if I turn that off, let's move our spawn point down here. Click in our trap. This is our skull dart trap. And you can see over here, um, I've got a bunch of options for it. So the dart trap can fire, uh, that's the range. Um, and in, in, in units, the further that is, um, the uh, further away the hero is before it starts firing. You can make that really close and it won't fire until we're right on top of it. So I've put that down to two. And this won't fire until we're right next to it. So we have a look at this. Not firing, not firing, not firing. Bam. So you don't really need a trap like that. That might be useful, something like an exploding hazard or something. But let's put that back up to about um, six. Fire intervals that. And let's show you um, up and down firing. This can fire in. So things that you might have to jump over or duck. And that fires two bullets. Hit the wall every couple of seconds, you know. It looks a bit weird with that blue dot there, but that's, you know, the trap. So what we want to do right now, I'll show you the all four directions. And these things can fire every second with a faster bullet speed. This is going to be a little cooler. This is more like a classic uh, bullet hill trap. Well, so that's firing there every few seconds. You're going to jump over it. And we can actually stagger them, so we can kind of go stagger that, slow them down a little bit, but then they kind of go on a timing thing. 
All right, let's check this out. Which means I've got a lot of variety in the bullet traps I can actually use just by going staggering. So see how they come out at different speeds? Slightly different, but you can kind of, you can really move that along. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And we could even kind of remove that firing interval so it's always firing all the time like this bam 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 and you could increase the bullet speed so they get really fast and that's probably too fast for the player to dodge uh, remove the stagger back down and fire them all at once bam 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 <laughs> um let's that's a bit nuts isn't it let's move the firing intervals i'll show you this other cool thing this is an aim at player so this will uh, shoot where it thinks the player is. So if I'm standing here, it'll, it'll aim at me. Whoa, that's too fast. I'm gonna turn that speed right down. Like that, and like that, okay. Requires a lot of experimentation just to get these things just right. So that's aiming to me there. If I'm over here, aiming at me there. If I'm up here and it's, It'll aim up there. And that's a tougher one to dodge, which is kind of cool. And that will be actually useful for enemies firing spells at you. The really deadly one that you can't actually avoid is the Heat Seeker. Uh, I'm planning to put a shield block mechanic in the game where Spartacus can put his shield up, which is miraculously hidden when uh, not used. But that will be in the game and that will allow us to block these. But for now, there's no way of dodging this. So watch this. You can outrun them for a while, depending on the speed of the bullet. Whoa. That one's too fast, but yeah, let's slow that one down so I can actually tr show you it, it. Okay. And of course, sometimes these bullets will look like fire. Sometimes they look like cannonballs. So you see it's following us around now. Now there's two of them following us around. Even if you duck, there's no avoiding it. The um, hit area is a little bit off at the moment. So if I've climb up here, it's still following us, dead. <laughs> but I'm gonna make that hitbox detection a little narrower so it doesn't, it uh, gives you a little bit more leeway. So that is the, um, the the shooting trap mechanic. And I'll show you another instance of that. So what I'm gonna do is we'll turn that back to, um, we'll just go left. And we'll navigate past that with our debug spawn point. So we'll spawn to the right of it. This is the classic a variation on that with a dart trap and a pressure plate. So this is a pressure plate, there's our dart trap here. So as we walk over to it, if I'm not looking where I'm going, a dart will fire at us. So look at this. Bam, dart, tr hit. And then every few seconds that triggers again. So bam, hit, dead. Um, of course, the clever player will be able to duck. So I duck that, stand off it. Duck. Yeah, so that's how you avoid it. And I could speed up that dart trap so it was, you know, almost impossible to dodge by going, um, changing the bullet speed to say 100. And you could even make it fire more rapidly. So check this out as you move over the dart trap. Well, that's actually still not as fast as it could be. I might increase the speed interval for the next version so it is impossible to jump to it. But you don't want anything that's too challenging for the player in terms of you, they always need to have a way to counter it because if something is that unfair, it's not worth it, is it? So those are the two um, relative new traps. And I'm gonna show you now, past that, that will only fire when you trigger it, but you can have that on auto fire as well. So it's always firing darts. Past that, we now have a little um, jump block, a uh, little steam vent when you, See, no hands. We've got our jump mechanic. We can use that to get over to that crumbling block. So this thing basically um, sends you flying into the air and you can use that to reach higher places onto the crumbling block. And now look at this guy. This is the, um, the big thing I wanted to show you today. And that is the, um, for lack of a better term, the chain ball trap. And now you've seen this in classic games like Kadash um, and other sort of, you know, RPG style platformers, you know, um, anything like Castlevania is a great example of it. Uh, but it's like a jump rope basically that you don't want to touch. So we go closer to him. We can jump over it. I've done a little um, 
illumination of the ball just so you can notice it and there's a little um wall motif there uh the savvy um, Swords and Sandals fan will recognize that as the giant titan from Swords and Sandals 4 that the players climb on one of the game boards. And I thought that would actually be a perfect, um, you know, uh, sculpture on the wall to hold this giant chain. Oh, we got hit. So I did a little bit of pixel work on him and bam, dead. So we're dead. Let's bring this back. Climb up here. You can increase the speed of this guy as well. So the moment the rotation speed is minus two, but I could go, we could set this to two and it will rotate the other way. If you have a look. Now it's going this this way. So you have to dodge it. Lucky I'm good at jump rope, huh? But if we wanted to, well, that knocks us into the air as well. We can increase the rotation speed to like 10. That's a tough one. So at this point, yeah, unlikely to be able to dodge that. Again, that goes into the whole unfair traps thing. Unfair. Because there's not many players alive that would be able to dodge that. <laughs> I mean, you could really set that crazy. Like, if you total propeller, you know, look at this. Straight out of the uh, Indiana Jones propeller. <laughs> look at that. But yeah, by the same token, we can reverse that. So now it's in reverse. That's a cool thing with Unity is you can test out your things in real time. I can test the tweak the values to make sure, you know, this is this fast enough, is this slow enough. You can duck down. So we're going to try and climb this ladder. See if we're fast enough. Not fast enough. Knocks us over the edge. Set that back down to um, minus two. And there's going to be variations of this. I'm going to do a pendulum soon, which will have like, you know, the Sword of Damocles that only goes half the swing. That's another cool variation on this. That'll require slightly different code uh, to get to work, but I'm planning that in a future release. I'm nearly done with the traps. There's a few more I wanna do. Climb up that, we should be able to avoid it just. And here we are. This is just an, an area with nothing in it, but a nice view of the moon, I guess. There's the moon if we look down. Um, I am planning, of course, on um, adding two or three more traps and then the things like, you know, rescuing prisoners and so on. But that should be enough map mechanics to have a pretty decent variety of levels for this game. All right, so finally, um, we'll fire up a build of this and just see how it plays um, in build mode. Actually, what we'll do is we'll go back to that skull trap, we'll make it fire in four directions, just for fun. Okay, and move our debug spawn point all the way back so if we do die we'll reappear at a reasonable spot skip the beginning part all right let's go compile this now all right as i'm so fond of saying here's one i prepared earlier um this of course build mode runs a lot faster than um regular edit mode and so you'll see and a lot smoother one thing I didn't show you in that video is the signs and this little signpost you can see here. Uh, and it's something I'm working on. When you go up to a sign, little text box appears. Are you not entertained? Uh, which of course uh, is Maximus from Gladiator seeing that. It's more like, are you not entertained? My name is Gladiator. Is that a good uh, Maximus impression? My name is Gladiator, Russell Crowe. I shall cheer for you. <laughs> All right, so you see that every time you go past the sign, but it's not that important. Uh, we're working on that, and that'll also be used for the dialogue. So past all this, because I wouldn't mind having enemies um, have little bits of dialogue and taunts and so on, just to create the story as we go in the game. So we're going to skip the uh, brute. Combat in the game is still very basic, and I'm going to be working on combo systems and so on once uh, all the traps are in the game. And as I said, traps are about 75% complete. We'll skip the water. You can see down there, there's actually a little um, glitch in the water there. I haven't made it wide enough, so you can still see a gap between the water and the wall. Something to work on. My favorite part of the game is, of course, the zip line. Whee! You can look up and down as well with the camera. Past the crumbling blocks. And the moving platform and the circular saw. Of course, with all this, there's going to be variations. And so, you know, the circular saw actually can go up and down and even can go faster and it can even go on uh, patterns. So like up, then left and that kind of thing. So I'll be working on that, uh, showing you that in future levels. The portcullis for the door that opens, fire trap, which we saw in the last video. 
and the spike trap which is on a timer you've got two seconds to run past them then they'll move up maybe it's three seconds crumbling block again and of course to our new area which should have those things fire very slowly because I um, didn't reset the timer, but that's actually really tough to get past. Um, we can't get past that. Right back to the beginning. Oh, that's annoying. Well, I only wanted to show you one other thing after that, which was the um, spinny ball thing, the change ball thing, but that doesn't matter. We don't need to see that for this video. Anyway, let's go back to this. So that's where we are, traps are a big part of platform games and so far we have eight or nine really interesting traps and tons of variation on them and i can imagine i'll be able to make you know 30 40 interesting levels at least uh just using those i still need to work on combat and um collectibles and that kind of thing uh so we're probably another month to six weeks away from starting to actually build the levels proper and then you'll really see uh, some interesting stuff in the video thank you of course for joining me th for those interested in uh, the development of Spartacus I do appreciate your feedback on what do you think of the game and uh, I look forward to showing you more in the coming weeks and months all right everybody see you later bye for now